Welcome to Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, as we get ready for game three of a four-game series between the Red Sox and the Kansas City Royals. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, along with Steve Lyons. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, tonight, our Chevy key player is on the move as we check out the lineup at second base tonight is Mookie Betts. Yeah, you know, we've learned a lot this season about different players on this team. Two in particular are actually some really good things that we've learned. Brock Holt and Mookie Betts are extremely versatile players, and Mookie finally gets to play his natural position of second base. He'll be making his first major league start over there. Look at the numbers uh, over this last month. They're unbelievable. He's been able to show some power, some speed, his average up into the 350 area. And really what they needed to do was give him a couple days to relearn how to bend down and grab a ground ball. And that sounds really stupid almost and simplistic, but he's been in the outfield for the last couple of months. You need to relearn how to bend over and catch the ball correctly in the infield. We will see him tonight in that capacity for the first time. Red Sox try to make it three in a row. And back in the lineup tonight for Boston, their third baseman, Will Middlebrooks. Three hits in the series, showing some pretty good bats in this series and hopes to continue to do that as we come back with more right after this. Baseball Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Welcome back to Kauffman Stadium where Red Sox Nation makes their way to Kansas City for game three of the series between the Red Sox and the Royals. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth. I'm Don Orsillo along with Steve Lyons. Well, the Red Sox tonight trying to make it three in a row over these Kansas City Royals. And tonight we'll see Ruby De La Rosa, who's already faced him this year. Yeah, you remember right after the All-Star break on July 19th, he beat this Kansas City team. And during that start, a lot of people were saying, wow, his command was a little off in that game. But that was by design. It was actually a brilliant start. He knew that this team was a free-swinging bunch of guys. He didn't throw a lot of strikes. They swung at it anyway, and he came away with the win. But lately, people are wondering about that command again he hasn't won in his last five starts in fact in those same five starts he hasn't gotten into the seventh inning so they're wondering maybe is he a little bit tired he's thrown almost 165 innings I'm looking for a bounce back start out of him tonight we'll find out Red Sox have been incredible so far against the Royals they've not lost this year against Kansas City we're back with the first pitch from KC right after this
Nothing is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Dunkin' Donuts, Toyota's website for deals via Toyota.com, Sullivan Tired Auto Repair, Subaru Dealers of New England, and by New York Life and their agent of the game. Now back at Kauffman Stadium for the third game of this four-game series between the Red Sox and the Royals. We play night baseball tonight, followed by day baseball tomorrow in the finale of the series. And the Red Sox have taken each of the first two games, and as a result, the Royals have slid out of the top spot in the American League Central. They are now half game back of the Detroit Tigers as they take the field. As they do, let's check out the visiting Red Sox starting nine, Mookie Betts. At second base, leading it off with Xander Bogarts at shortstop batting second. David Ortiz, the DH. Joanna Cespedes in left field in the cleanup spot with Daniel Nava in right. Mike Napoli at first base with Jackie Bradley Jr. in center. Will Middlebrooks at third base bats eighth. And Christian Vasquez does the catching and bats ninth. Tonight's Royals starting pitchers presented by your New England Nissan dealers. Jeremy Guthrie on the mound tonight for Kansas City. 30th start of the year. He is 10 and 11 coming in with a 4.54 earned run average. 114 strikeouts in 182 and a third innings. Last time out, a loss against the Tigers. He lasted just two and two thirds innings. Gave up eight runs. Six of them were earned runs. All right, let's check out the defensive team for the Kansas City Royals around the infield. Mustakas. Escobar, Infante, and Hosmer over at first base. In the outfield, you got Gordon in left, the change in center field. Gerard Dyson, the speedster in center. Kane's going to move over to right field. And the battery for the day, Salvador Perez is the catcher. And Jay Guts, Jeremy Guthrie, is your pitcher. We'll see if he lives up to his Twitter handle. Umpire crew, Jim Reynolds has the play calling the balls and strikes with the crew chief field and Colbert at first base. Brian Knight at second. And Manny Gonzalez is the umpire at third base. Much nicer here tonight than it was in the first two games of the series. Still only 59 degrees here at the ballpark. Breeze out to left at 7 miles per hour. And the forecast is clear for the remainder of the night. In fact, there's not a cloud in the sky as we get the game started here tonight. Lights are already on here in Kansas City. And Mookie Betts about to lead it off for the Red Sox as the Red Sox in their road grays. Royals in their home whites. Mookie Betts at 291. Four homers and 12 runs batted in. That's four for nine in the series with a double and an RBI. First pitch of the ball game's in there for strike one and we're underway. You remember when the road grays had the ugly block blue lettering on it? Sure thing? do. You wore that unit, oh, didn't man. you? They've spiced it up a little bit. In the air to right center field. Dyson's on the move, and he will make the catch in front of the warning track as Lorenzo Kane kind of veered off there. And Dyson makes the catch for the first out of the ball game. Favorite uniform you ever wore? Believe it or not. Just because of the way I thought it looked was uh, Montreal Expos. It's a pretty cool unit. It was a cool uniform. A lot of embroidery on it. It didn't get a lot of play because nobody cared about the Expos and they played north of the border and no one cared. <laughs> Even the Expo fans didn't care. One down here and the first pitch swinging is Xander Bogarts fouling it off to the right out of play. So tonight it is Jeremy Guthrie. Red Sox saw a lot of him when he was a member of the Baltimore Orioles. In the midst of a three year deal, year two of a three year deal Here with Kansas City now. 30th start of the year. His numbers against the Red Sox in 20 previous starts, just three and nine with a 5.06 earned run average. A blue path to left center field, falling fast, and it's going to fall in for a hit. Alex Gordon will get it back in, but Xander Bogart's aboard with a one out base hit. Did you know Fenway Park hosts more than just Red Sox games, sporting events, and concerts? Fenway Park has a variety of unique spaces to host your next holiday party, meeting, or special family event. Visit RedSox.com slash events or call 617-226-6791 to book your Fenway Park event today. One out runner at first, and here is David Ortiz. Poppy had last night off back in there again tonight. 
Good overall numbers and great numbers against Guthrie. He's taken him deep three times. Explain the shades to me. The backdrop being in the bright sunshine? Well, no. I mean, when you're David Ortiz, you are so cool that the sun is always shining. <laughs> Trying to figure it out because right now the shadows are on the field. He may have those lenses in there where they actually brighten up the field. Oh, nice. Shoots it through the left side. He saw that pretty well. And Red Sox have two on with one out. I remember Jeff Kent used to wear those sunglasses with the with the yellow lenses that actually make things brighter. And there's David Ortiz. His are kind of dark and a little reddish tint, but he saw that. Little sinking fastball down and away, and he beats the shift with it. Yeah, what would you call those lenses? Iridescent, multicolored. Well, it works for David, whatever they are. He's got himself a base hit, and he's on at first. Bogarts at second, one down, and Yuenis Cespedes is coming up. 260 with 21 home runs, 94 runs batted in. Cespedes has spent a lot of this first two games of this series hitting the ball to the third baseman. Lots of bouncers down there to third here so far. One for four in the ball game last night. Two for eight so far in the series. His numbers with runners in scoring position pretty good on the year. Coming in with 94 RBIs on the season as he takes a pitch up high. Bogarts at second, Ortiz at first with one out here in the first inning. In the air to shallow right field, Lorenzo Kane making his way in, and he makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Well, tomorrow night, catch up with Charlie Moore. Charlie visits Idaho to take part in fly fishing on the Snake River with his son and hits two world famous locations for great trout fishing. Idaho is normally a quiet state, but things certainly change as the mad fisherman rolls into town tomorrow at 7 p.m. I don't even like to fish, and I want to go on his show. <laughs> you ever met Charlie? Oh, yeah. It's a ball of energy, man. He is. It's fun. Lots of fun, especially when he goes to Italy on his show. He he does some cool things. Occasionally they fish. Mix in some fishing. They eat. It's a good gig. Two on, two down, and Daniel Nava. Well, it takes strike one. Guthrie's one of those guys that has to keep the ball down in the strike zone. He's not going to overpower you. Throws a sinking fastball. He'll cut his fastball. He's got a pretty good changeup. But if he gets up in the zone... Thigh higher or higher, he's going to get his lunch. Backs off, looks Bogart's back at second base. The guy who generally stays around the strike zone, he's issued only six walks in his last seven starts. See the splits for him. <laughs> his numbers in his last start, he really didn't have a chance to walk anybody. Yeah, hanging around just two and two thirds innings. He came out to ask the catcher what kind of stuff he had, and the catcher said, I don't know, I haven't caught anything yet. Every time he throws one up here, it gets whacked. His last win came at Texas on the 23rd of August. And two no decisions and the last time out the very tough outing two and two thirds giving up the eight runs to the Tigers. Ah, but chops one down the first baseline Hosmer has got it. It win the race to the bag that ends the inning. Red Sox strand a pair. The Royals are coming up from KC.
as we check out to tonight's starting pitcher. Brought to you by New England Audi dealers. Experience the all new 2015 Audi A3 today. Ruby De La Rosa makes his 17th start in a Red Sox uniform. Four and six with a 4.01 earned run average. 92 innings. But sitting at 287 against him. As starts off with a fastball here to see these Escobar. Last time out, four innings, giving up three runs on seven hits. Took the loss against the Blue Jays. A little different looking. Lineup tonight for Kansas City. Escobar leading it off after Nori Aoki led off the first two games of the series. It's Escobar. There's Aoki sliding into the two spot in the order. You're talking about De La Rosa's outing against Kansas City earlier this year, trying not to stay down the middle or throw strikes kind of off the plate, take advantage of their aggressiveness. Yeah, these guys love to swing the bats. It's been their problem all season long that they don't have great plate discipline. Here's Escobar with a base hit down the left field line. He's thinking too. Cespedes' throw is going to be close, but not in time. Escobar in with a double to start the bottom of the first inning. Well, Mookie Betts actually gets tested right away down there at second base, too. Hasn't played there for a long time. Cespedes is going to go down into that corner and come up firing. Watch Mookie get to second base, reach out to get the throw, and then just can't get the tag back in time. Is he where he should be in that instance? Yeah, I think. Nor normally you'd like to get to second base and even straddle it, but I think Mookie realized that he did have to reach out and grab that throw. It wasn't going to get all the way to him. That's that's the problem some players have is they'll reach out and grab a ball that's actually coming at them. Let it get to you. But he had to reach because the throw wasn't exactly right on line, I don't think. Now Nori Aoki squaring here and he fouls it off at the plate. Aoki has been leading off and playing right field in the series, but today bats second and is the DH. Happily coming in from first year to talk to De La Rosa. Ed Yo said that he needs more offense in his lineup and he needs more speed in his lineup. So he gets Dyson into the game, hitting ninth. Escobar at the top, and then Aoki. He's got some pretty good speed guys three in a row. Now he's swinging away, or at least taking his. Showed bunt the first time. Takes it off. One and one the count as he looks down for more sides. Aoki was 0 for 4 in last night's game after he had a couple of hits in the first game of the series. Swings away and it's a fly ball down the right field line. Nava over towards the corner, but it is a foul ball. When you see a guy who's faking like he's going to bunt, if you're one of the infielders, the thing you look for is his hand position. If he slides his hand back down the bat, then you know he's going to swing. And that's basically what Ayuku did there. He had his hand all the way up the bat like he was going to bump, but his first move is to slide it back down into a hitting position. Chops it over Middlebrooks at third and into left. Here comes Escobar around. Here comes the throw from Cespedes. It's going to be not in time. It gets away. Backed up by De La Rosa. Looked like the throw beat him, but. Uh, Vasquez couldn't come up with it on a hop, and the Royals take a 1 0 lead. Boy, just a chopper, and this is what Aoki does just swings at it, tries to hit the ball hard on the ground somewhere, just a big high hopper. And once again, Cespedes is throw just offline enough where Vasquez has to try to reach out and catch it, short hop it all at the same time, and make a tag, and he couldn't do it all. So two batters into the game and Kansas City on top one to nothing. Aoki with a single and an RBI takes second on the throw. And there's a swing and a miss for Lorenzo Kane. Kane just under 300 at 299. Four home runs and 46 runs batted in. Kane three for seven in the series. 
Fights that one off on the ground right side. Napoli will flip to De La Rosa covering for the out. As taking third is Aoki with that one down in the inning. Let's check out the rest of the Royals starting nine tonight. Alcides Escobar at shortstop. Nori Aoki is the DH. Lorenzo Kane in right. Alex Gordon in left field in the cleanup spot is about to be coming up. Salvador Perez does the catching. Eric Hosmer at first base with Omar Infante at second. Mike Moustakis at third. That's eighth. And Jared Dyson is in center field. Well, Alex Gordon here with the chance to give the Royals some more breathing room. High and the throw down to third is going to hit the runner and kicks into left. And here comes Aoki, and it puts Kansas City on top two to nothing. So Vasquez trying to throw him out. It looked like it was going to be a pretty good throw, but it hits him in the back and kicks into shallow left, and the Royals grab another run. Aoki does exactly what you're supposed to do. This guy's a little pest, but watch him run back on the baseline, almost inside the baseline. He knows that the throw is going to third base, so he tries to get in the way of it. He's actually hoping to get hit by that ball. Doesn't hurt that bad. Bounces into the outfield, and you score a run. Now Gordon will lift it in the air to shallow left field. Cespedes makes his way in. Two down. The Red Sox defense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Middlebrooks, Bogarts, Betts over at second base, and Napoli back in the lineup at first. In the outfield, Cespedes, Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field, Daniel Nava in right, and the pitcher and catcher, Vasquez and De La Rosa. So two down, two runs in, and Salvador Perez, the batter. I'll take strike one. There's a 262 coming into tonight's action. 16 homers, 64 runs batted in. As four for his last 24 as he hits a ground ball to the left side. Bogart's off balance throw gets there in time to end the inning. Kansas City comes away with two runs in their half of the first inning, deleted two to nothing.
on TC with tonight's poll question, you guys. The Negro League Hall of Fame is located right here in Kansas City. So we want to know who is your favorite Negro League player. Sox 1 for Cool Papa Bell. Sox 2, Josh Gibson. Sox 3, Buck O'Neill. Or Sox 4, Satchel Page. Text your answer to 536-536. Message and data rates. Those may apply. Text help if you need it. Visit Nesson.com slash terms for all that fun legal stuff, guys. I got to go Buck O'Neill just because uh, I knew him for a while, and of course uh, he would be here every time he'd come into Kansas City. It was always great to see him, and he was at uh, the Boston Baseball Writers Dinner a few times as well. And, uh, terrific speaker if you ever had the chance to hear him speak. I met him, and what a fine gentleman he was as well. Like Napoli leading it off here in the second inning. Napoli at 252, 17 homers and 55 runs batted in. Sliding down the order and batting sixth now in the Red Sox order. Bites it off foul to the right and out of play. Well, if you want to relive the best Red Sox moments from this past week, then tune in tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. and again at 9.30 for the ultimate Red Sox show presented by Triple A. Jackie Bradley Jr. waiting on deck as Napoli leads it off. Here in the second inning, Red Sox trying to answer a two run bottom of the first inning for Kansas City. Guthrie getting out of a jam in the first. Red Sox had runners at first and second with one out. But he got Cespedes to fly out and Nava to ground out and Red Sox stranding a pair in that first inning. This is a guy to me that matches up pretty well with a guy like Guthrie. He's not going to throw in the mid to upper 90s to be able to throw the ball right by Napoli. We see Napoli swing and miss at a lot of pitches. He's got an excellent eye and this guy isn't going to throw it past him. In there for strike three. Napoli turns and heads to the dugout with the first strikeout handed out by Jeremy Guthrie of the night. Just that quickly, he takes the ball right down the middle for strike three. Right on the kneecaps. He thought it was low. One down here in the second inning. Jackie Bradley Jr., the batter and center fielder. And at the lip of the grass at third is Mike Moustakis. Bradley 0 for 8 so far in the series against Kansas City. Five ball to center field. Gerard Dyson going back. Two down. Berkshire Bank, America's most exciting bank. Visit BerkshireBank.com or one of our locations in New England and New York to discover how big bank resources combined with small bank attention can help you find your exciting moments. Life is exciting. Let Berkshire Bank help. Down in the second inning, four in a row. Tired now by Guthrie and brings up Will Middlebrooks. Will three for eight in the series, the double and an RBI. Jackie Bradley Jr. has one home run on the season, and he's probably hit. Three of his best shots in the last two nights in one of the biggest ballparks you can play in. Dead center right there. It's not going to go out of here. And he hit two to deep right field in last night's game. Oh. 4 10 to straightaway center field and a pretty big outfield here in Kansas City. Ball doesn't jump out of here. Obviously, the Kansas City Royals don't have a lot of power, but there's a reason why they're last in the major leagues in home runs. Millbrook's going to take a four pitch walk and head down to first base. He's on with two outs here in the second inning. Christian Vasquez coming up. 214 average for Vasquez. No homers and 15 runs batted in. 
Amazingly, the Red Sox missed the heat here by coming this time of year to Kansas City. Generally, this place is as hot as it gets. <laughs> yeah. We've been cold. This one will get through to the backstop, and Middlebrooks, the second base without a problem. Wild pitch charge to Jeremy Guthrie. Well, same thing we saw it happen to Webster last night. Right there to Guthrie, just kind of hooked that fastball, and no real warning for the catcher. It's hard to get over there and make the play on it. And there for a strike to Vasquez, one and one. Vasquez 0 for 6 so far in the series. Down on the count, one and two. Fastball running in on him at 93 miles an hour. It's a bread and butter for Guthrie. Running fastball. Looks like a strike, ends up in on your hands. Sox have played five games against Kansas City, three at Fenway Park, two here at KC, and have won them all so far this year. Swept the three game series July 18th through the 20th following the All Star break. And Sox were two and five against Kansas City last year. Remarkably, this one fouled off to the right out of play. Old champion Red Sox, two and five against KC last year. Now KC fighting for a playoff spot here, and they can't figure out a way to beat the Red Sox. And they've slipped out of the top spot in the AL Central, half game back of the Tigers. Vasquez takes a pitch running in again, full count. With the AL Central again, Royals half game back, Indians four and a half back. Seattle and Kansas City tied for wild card spot to begin tonight's action at the moment. Popped up left side, foul ground, Moustakis in the third base coach's box makes the catch. It ends the inning. Red Sox lead Middlebrooks in second. It's 2 0 KC.
Kansas City and he takes strike one from Ruby De La Rosa. And City coming up with two runs in the first inning. Osmer at 267. Seven homers and 50 runs batted in. Double for Escobar in the first inning, followed by a single by Aoki, who drove in the first run. Then second Kansas City run scored on an error charge to Vasquez. To right field, Nava coming in. He'll make the catch for the first out of the second inning. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ right now with the MLB Preplay mobile app. Download for free and start predicting every bat of every Red Sox game all season. Tonight, Preplay predicts Ruby De La Rosa will go five and a third innings, allow three earned runs, seven hits, walk two, and strike out five. And for the people that didn't really understand the logic of that Aoki play, when you take your lead off a of third base, you go in foul territory in case the ball gets hit down there. If you get hit with the ball in foul territory, you're not out. If you're in fair territory, you're out if you get hit with the ball. If someone's trying to pick you off, you run back directly in the baseline, hoping to get hit with the ball so you don't get picked off. And exactly what happened right there is what he was hoping would happen. That led to the second Kansas City run. Omar Infante reaches out, takes it the other way for a base hit. One out single, third hit of the night for Kansas City. Well, De La Rosa, you watch the location of that pitch right there that's up and away. Not really a terrible pitch, but the reason it's able to be dumped into right field there is because it's elevated into the strike zone. If that ball's in the same uh, area of the plate, but about a foot lower, it would have been a much more difficult pitch to hit. One out, one on. Mike Mustak is the batter. That's up and away to him. Oil's third baseman, toting a 209 average, 15 homers, 51 runs driven in. Two for six in the series so far for Mustakis. Well, Flares this to center field. Bradley Jr. coming in will make the catch. <laughs> Did you see what he was doing? <laughs> yeah. He's pulled that a few times. What is he picked off seven guys from making outfield assists on just acts like he didn't see it for a minute. Hoping that he could get Infante to maybe come off of the base a little bit farther. And then he would just nail him at first. Threw the arms up in the air like he couldn't see it initially. Yeah. Makes the grab. Two down. Infante still at first base. Gerard Dyson's first appearance of the series. Hasn't played the last two nights and has made just one start in the last seven games. He doesn't play all that much. Obviously, he's got some other guys in front of him that are making some decent money. The guys that are supposed to be out there, guys like Kane and this guy leads the team in stolen bases. He's played in just over 100 games, but that doesn't really tell the story either. He gets into a lot of games defensively and for pinch running. He can fly. Down 0 2 so far here. 282 average for him on the year when he has played. One of the steel leaders in. 33 of them on the year for Dyson. 52 for Jose Altuve. Altuve hitting at 337. Set the pace in the American League, vying for a batting title. The last batting title winner was who also led in stolen bases. You know the answer to that? I don't know the answer. I'm just throwing it out there. Hmm. Willie McGee? That'd be National League, but no, it's a good question. It usually doesn't go hand in hand. We'll find out the answer. I don't know what it is. Check your Twitter page if someone's already <laughs> answered it. <laughs> uh, Dyson batting here with two down, runner at first, down on the count, one and two. 
There goes the runner at first, and Vasquez with a good throw, and it is in time. Came up a little short there as he was sliding into second base. Throw was great, and Infante is caught stealing to end the inning. the plate we're gonna give you a second look at him gunning Infante down there's the big smile we get a shot we'll show that to you this is a tough pitch to throw because he has to reach so far out and then square his feet back up but watch how quick his feet are especially in this second view look at the quick feet got a tremendously strong arm of course we didn't bother showing you the throw down the second it was on the money and it was a gun but it's his quick feet and his positioning behind the plate that make him so good back there he bets leading it off here in the top half of the third inning and look out pitch up and in one and two that's fly down to center field to Gerard Dyson in the first inning 0 for 1. Thing. We saw him last year in spring training. It was like, wow. I mean, he really caught your attention right out of the gate. And you thought, boy, if he could just hit a little bit. And yeah. That's the thing. They're still working with him to try to get him to hit a little bit. Well, he's young still. You know, I mean, the hitting's the last thing to come, especially for a catcher, because he's got other things to worry about. It, his job is to take care of the pitching staff and make sure that the Red Sox get outs. Of course, he does have a tremendously strong arm. To go along with that quickness, but there are guys around them in baseball that don't have great arms but are good catchers because of their fundamentals behind the plate. AJ Ellis is a guy that comes to mind, throws guys out right and left, doesn't have the strongest arm. Off the glove at third, and the miscues continue here for Kansas City in the series. They've been very sloppy in the series defensively, and that continues. Error charge to Mustakis, Betts reaches at first. Mustakis always looks flat footed to me. Look at him. Kind of flat footed when the ball's hit to him. He's been an excellent defensive third baseman his whole career here in Kansas City, but he has not had a good series here. So Mookie Betts on at first base to begin things here in the third inning. Xander Bogarts had a single to left field first time up. I talked to Mike Socher earlier in the year and he was talking about how he felt that uh, of course he was a former catcher in his own right a good one that uh, catchers take the longest to develop you buy into that theory absolutely.
kind of what we just talked about. They have so much more responsibility than any other player on the field. Line to right center field. Dyson moving over, and he'll make the catch as back to the bag at first goes Betts. Well, lots of speed in that outfield now tonight. Dyson in center, Kane in right, and how much is going to fall out there tonight in that area? If you're the second baseman on a ball club, the guy you most have to worry about is you. If you're the catcher, you're almost like a manager. You have to worry about who's pitching that night. You have to worry about the scouting reports for the other team. You have to worry about almost everything, and really the last thing in line is your own at-bats. So I guess that's why so many become managers, I guess. Yeah. That's at first one down, and they'll check on him at first base. Always oh, got that big lead, and he just does get back. Check again before you get that lead again. Ortiz will take the strike. He singled the left field in the first inning. One of the two hits the Red Sox have compiled so far in the game. Shift on here on the right side of the infield, tight to the infield. And Escobar coming to the right side. Talking to Brian Butterfield about Mookie Betts, and he said the thing that's impressed him the most is that he's never once been scared. Usually when you come to the big leagues for the first time, you know, you don't get as big a lead off of first base because you don't want to get picked off. You don't play as shallow in the outfield like Mookie Betts does because you want to get your feet wet. He's played exactly the same no matter what. Gets a huge lead at first, plays shallow in the outfield, does everything just like he did in the minor leagues, hasn't adjusted one thing just because he's in the major leagues. And it's worked out great for him. Foul back to the screen, and it evens at two and two to Big Poppy. Ooh. That was the pitch that David wanted. Look at this. Oh. Betts tries to get a 16 foot lead. Sounds like a long way. That sounds it? like a lot. <laughs> a lot. Hard to get back. Popped up foul and out of play off to the left. Still two and two. The numbers against Guthrie for David Ortiz in his career, and that includes. Three home runs. Tease did not play last night. Two for five in the first game of the series with an RBI. Lead at first again. And that's down and in full count. An error allowed Betts to get on. The error made by Mustakis at third base. Xander Bogarts fly out to center. One out, one on. And Ortiz now Cespedes next, waiting on deck. There goes Betts at first as Ortiz sends it into right field for a base hit. Heading for third is Betts who get there without a problem. Base hit for Big Poppy through the right side. And the Red Sox have runners at first and third with one down. Poppy was upset at that one fastball that he fouled back, but he hung in there with his at bat, worked it to a 3 2 count, fouled off a couple other pitches, and got himself another good pitch to hit. First and third, one down, and you want a Cespedes is coming up. Cespedes is flight out to right field in the first inning, 0 for 1.
takes strike one. Twenty-two of thirty-four from third with less than two outs, sixty-five percent for Cespedes. Drives into center field, sending Dyson back a few steps. He'll get there to make the catch as Betts tags at third base and jogs home with the first Red Sox run of the night. Sack fly for Cespedes gets Boston on the board. Typical Cespedes in a Red Sox uniform. Spent the first two games of this series kind of bouncing out to the third baseman, getting a hit here or there, and then when there's a chance to drive in a run, he gets him home. Two down, David Ortiz at first base, and Daniel Nava now coming up. Nava grounded out to first base in the first inning. Yes, he'll take ball one. one. For three so far in the series with an RBI. It's a 289 against right handed pitching. Fly ball down the left field line. Alex Gordon running into foul ground, but no chance well back into the seats. Well, tomorrow, catch a special David Ortiz themed episode of Nesson Clubhouse. We learn how to hit opposite field and how to get strong like David Ortiz. Plus, we learn how to be a bullpen cop at Fenway. Don't miss Nesson Clubhouse live and commercial free tomorrow at 12 30. Side for ball two. That'll pick up the corner, and it's now two and two. With a 381 on base percentage since his recall on June the second from Pawtucket, this is his third major league stand of the year. Look where Hosmer's playing there with two strikes. Why wouldn't you back up? Ava sends it out towards right center field on the run is Kane and Dyson, and it'll be Whoa. Dyson who steps in front of Kane to make the catch. Almost a collision out there. Ends the inning. Red Sox grab a run. It's 2-1 Kansas City.
Red Sox get a run in the top half of the inning. Now Kansas City coming to bat here in the bottom of the third. Uh, Dyson leading it off here against Ruby De La Rosa. He was batting last inning when Omar Infante was going down at second base. By Vasquez to end the inning. Dyson at 282 with a home run and 23 runs batted in. Larosa giving up two runs in the first inning. Flip foul off to the left out of play, still one and two. I don't think the Red Sox need any more base runners than they really want to have, but it would be fun to watch a little bit of a duel between Dyson and Vasquez. Ruby is fairly quick to the plate. Vasquez throws so well. It's not often you see a speedster stick his speed game in his back pocket, but they tell me that virtually every time Dyson gets on, he's going to try to steal, that he might think twice in this game. We'll count now. De La Rosa has not walked anybody, nor has he struck anybody out in this game. Working to the number nine batter in the bottom of the third inning. He's got to throw his most confident pitch right here. Got to throw him a strike. Hits it on the ground to short. Bogarts, a little double pump to get a hurry. And he just does get it there in time. Almost like he was surprised by the speed of Dyson there. <laughs> this kid can get down the line. Bogey taking his time and then letting it rip over here and then. Not so sure that Napoli stayed on the base. Napoli kind of double clutched over there. No challenge, and they get the call, so keep moving along. I'm down now. CD's Escobar coming up here for the Royals. He doubled and scored in the bottom of the first inning. Rosa has not won since the 10th of August. Victory against the Angels in a seven inning, one run outing. Two losses and three no decisions since. And last time out lasting just four innings. Got removed after giving up a three run home run to Jose Bautista in the fifth inning of that game against the Jays. 81 pitches in four innings. All these different pitchers that the Red Sox are using here at the end of the year, the younger guys. So I wonder whether or not uh, De La Rosa may be a closing candidate, a guy who's got some good giddy up on the fastball, especially if you're only talking about one inning. Yeah. I mean, they're going to talk about a lot of different guys, but I certainly see him as a as a future starter, and those guys don't fall out of trees either. I think they'll talk about a bunch of different people, or they'll go out. They either resign Koji or they go out and look at someone else who's been a proven closer and get him. You have Mujica coming back another year next year. He goes back. Workman has always been a guy I talked about as a guy that can, you know, hasn't really pitched that well in the starting role this season, but he's a guy that can rush his fastball up there 97 if you're talking about only having to do that one inning a game. A shortstop Bogarts charging in. His throw will be in time. Two down in the inning as we send it down to Gary. Guys, first time seeing Mookie Betts at second base in over a couple of months. Telling me over the course of the last three days, he's really only taken about 30 minutes worth of infield, saying it would have been nice to get a little bit more prep time in terms of some situational drills with Xander Bogarts, maybe helping turn the double play but nevertheless 30 minutes he's in there right now got tested pretty early in terms of how often we're going to see him at second base with only 14 games left to go John Farrell saying before the game that to avoid going back and forth with Mookie from the outfield to the infield back to the outfield he will be an infielder for the duration of the season guys <laughs> that will help we've heard that before though yes we have we heard he would not be coming into the infield this season before so yeah. we'll see whatever the needs are really and this was why this 
change took place really necessity more than anything else. Yep. Petey's done for the year and. And they say that Brock Holt will come back and play but Brock Holt plays everywhere so he doesn't have to play second. And let's face it Brock Holt has played pretty much everywhere but second as well. Showing Bunt is Aoki, but he will take the strike. Hey, Red Sox Nation, get a free medium beverage when you enroll in the Dunkin' Donuts Rewards Program, DD Perks. Just pay with your registered DD card or DD mobile app to earn points towards more free beverages. It's Dunkin's way of rewarding their loyal fans. Enroll today at ddperks.com. Red Sox run on Dunkin'. Wonder how bad Billy Butler's going. He's two for four lifetime against De La Rosa with a home run, and he's not in the lineup because Aoki is your DH today. Aoki's been their best hitter. Swing and a miss on a pitch wow. down and in, kind of spun himself into the ground. A strikeout for De La Rosa, 2 1, Kansas City. Top half of the fourth inning, two to one, Kansas City on top of Boston. Mike Napoli leading it off. Napoli, Bradley Jr. and Middlebrook, six, seven, and eight for the Red Sox here in the fourth inning. Jeremy Guthrie back on the mound. And Napoli first pitch swinging, fouls it off. Napoli struck out looking in the second inning. Only strikeout so far tonight for Guthrie. Down 0 and 2. Well, school is back in session, but specially priced Red Sox tickets for students are still available for every Sox game. Tickets start at just nine dollars. So go to RedSox.com/student to take advantage of this great offer today. Napoli to center field. Dyson coming in to make the catch, kind of diving forward. As he had to on the sinking liner for the first out of the fourth inning. Eastern Bank knows small business keeps our economy and community strong. That's why they've been named the number one SBA lender in Massachusetts five years in a row. Eastern Bank here, your first. A beautiful stadium here in Kansas City, Kaufman Stadium. One out in the fourth inning, and it brings up Jackie Bradley Jr. who takes strike one. Not going to be many hits out there in the outfield. Oh, 
They're going to run him down out there. Gordon's a gold glover in left. Dyson's one of the fastest players in the game. And Kane in right field is a natural gifted center fielder. Off the end of the bat, a lot of spin on this. Moustakis fires it in time to get Bradley. Osmond does a nice job of digging it out. Got it all kinds of spin off it as he was headed towards the left side. Stock is making the play to the left. That's really the smartest move is to spin move like that. It's really hard to stop your momentum and go back to your right and square up that throw. Two down for Will Middlebrooks. Will walked in the second inning. The only free pass served up by Jeremy Guthrie so far in the game. Line to left and Gordon will get there to make the catch. Some solid contact there, but a one, two, three inning for Guthrie. Three and a half done, two one, Kansas City. From technologies that make your life easier to people who care about your community, Eastern Bank is committed to putting you first. Learn all the ways Eastern puts you first at easternbank.com. It's on to the bottom of the fourth inning back in Kansas City. Lorenzo Kane leads it off for the Royals. Kane grounding back to the mound in the first inning, 0 for 1. Delarosa giving up a double to the first batter he faced, a single to the second batter has calmed down, only given up one hit since. Now, but he falls behind 3 0 to the leadoff hitter here in the fourth inning. Kane's another guy with 24 stolen bases. Get him on, they can run. Alex Gordon and Salvador Perez expected here in the fourth inning. He's trying to get timeout was Kane. He was backing out of the box, but the pitch comes in and it's a strike. Definitely taken all the way. Because he'll take another strike. <laughs> he ought to just stand in the box. 
What's wrong with that pitch? All of a sudden, De La Rosa battling his way back here was 3 0. Oh, full count now. Come all the way back and get him. On the ground and by the dive of Middlebrooks at third base down the left field line. Kane headed for second base. Cespedes will get it back in. Wide turn of second, but it's a leadoff double for Lorenzo Kane to begin things in the fourth inning. Time for a Toyota game break in Tom Karen. TC. All right, Tom, thanks very much, and good luck to the Pawtucket Red Sox trying to get another Governor's Cup. Yeah, that's great news. On a couple fronts, really. Woo! Governor's Cup trophy winners in 1984, then again in 2012. That was a long drought. And now maybe again this year. And then the other thing, too, I think with Castillo down there playing and contributing. This one fouled off to the left. He's taking the official Red Sox ticket partner as the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway. All the 200% guarantee. Right now, his ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Treat yourself or someone special. Visit A's ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Renzo Kane at second base. Nobody out here in the fourth inning. Shifting here on the right side against Alex Gordon. And Gordon into right field for a base hit. Kane will be stopped at third, and Kansas City with runners at first and third, and nobody out here in the fourth inning. Snaps an 0 for 20 for Alex Gordon. And yeah, 3 for 34 in this month. Couple pretty good pitches to hit over the last couple hitters here for. De La Rosa, obviously the 3 2 pitch to Kane was a fastball down the middle. That one right out over the middle of the plate. He's got to get ahead in the count so he can go to work with that change up and expand the strike zone a little bit more. First and third, nobody out. And Salvador Perez coming up with a chance here to add some runs for Kansas City. Rounded out to shortstop in the first inning, 0 for 1. To right field, fair ball down that right field line. From third comes Kane. Gordon going to third on an RBI double for Salvador Perez that puts Kansas City on top 3 to 1. Three straight hits here for the Royals in the fourth inning and a run. Seen a few of these in this game too. Just jam shots. Ugly finders. On the Ebbets out to talk to De La Rosa. Mind you, the most popular way to follow the September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts, the MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. A double, a single, and another double. So far, a run here for Kansas City in the fourth inning. Alex Gordon at third base, Salvador Perez at second, and here is Eric Hosmer. Hosmer flied out to the right fielder, Daniel Nava, in the second inning. First action of the Red Sox pen, Stephen Wright. We have seen could go a while if necessary. Swing and a miss. Challenged him there, 96 miles an hour, and it was up. A 
Now it's Gordon at third base, Salvador Perez at second base. Nobody out here for Kansas City. And setting the table here for a big inning. Osmer gets jammed and fouls it off. And the pitching line for Ruby De La Rosa is brought to you by Ace Ticket. Three plus six hits, three runs. He has not walked anybody, struck out a batter, and 56 pitches deep and in some trouble here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Right, he's going to look for a strikeout right here. He's probably going to throw the changeup too. Swing and a miss. Able to strike out Hosmer for the first out here of the fourth inning. Oh, just sinking fastball there, 90 miles an hour. Hosmer might have been looking for something different. Make insurance great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Second and third, one down. Omar Infante coming up. Single to right field in the second inning, but then was caught trying to steal by Christian Vasquez. Last night, 0 for 4 in the game with a pair of strikeouts. Is now one for his last 12 at the plate. Oh. 2 and 0. You can see how De La Rosa has gotten himself in trouble tonight. Everything kind of up in the zone. Not really finishing his pitches. Everything's just sailing on him and staying up. Guards in for some encouragement. In there for a strike, two and one. Right at the top of the zone that time. The breakdown by inning for him. That's 60 pitches here with one out in the fourth inning. With work to do here in the inning. See everything up. You see the where all the pitches are. Even the last one, the third pitch, the changeup was up in the zone. He can't live up there. Gotta try to pitch down. If you want to climb the ladder every once in a while to get a guy to swing through it, it's fine, but you can't consistently stay at the belt buckle. To third, Middlebrooks picks it in the backhand. Throw to first on a hop is good for an out. One run will score as going to third base is Perez, and Kansas City takes a four to one lead. Middlebrooks able to pick it on the backhand, gets it to first to get Infante, but a run scores. It's a nice play right there by Middlebrooks. See, watch what he's thinking here. He's probably figuring Alex Gordon's got too good a jump. Down the line, can't get the guy at home, so he does his best to get the guy at first, which is an awkward off balance going away from the play throw, and he did it nicely. So Infante on the ground out picks up an RBI. Kansas City gets their fourth run. Perez now at third, and Mike Mustak is the batter. He'll take strike one. Major League players go through every scenario in their mind before the ball's thrown. But sometimes a ball will get hit to you where you have to think about a bunch of things in about a second and a half to decide what you want to do. And that was one of those plays for Middlebrooks. Ball on a strike to Moustakis. Take a look where the problems have been for De La Rosa. Really in the middle, highest turn run average for him. Here he is in the fourth, giving up two runs. It, did he? he I think blocked. he balked. He dropped the ball on his yep. way to his stretch. Fielding Culbreth calling a balk from first base. 
It looked to me like Sounded he dropped like it. Timeout was called first, and I think Farrell's going to argue that. I thought it was timeout before he made the call, but uh, Jim Reynolds telling John Farrell no because Reynolds called timeout. I think Ruby's saying, well, I regained the handle on the ball. See, he drops it, and Ruby's saying, well, I caught it, so what's the big deal? Farrell definitely arguing about when timeout was called by the home plate umpire. He made the call initially and then he called timeout is what Jim Reynolds is saying. Because no. the batter at the time was stock has asked for time was granted time when he saw the bobble. Did he ask for time? Is that why he did? Watch this. Stock is still asked for timeout. There's the bobble. He now asks for time yeah. backs out. Reynolds gives That's it to him, doesn't call the block. The block came from Gilbert, yeah. the first base umpire. Well, the block clearly happened before the timeout. Because that's why Mustak has called timeout because it looked weird to him, and that's why they allowed John Farrell to go out and argue. You can't argue a balk call, which is the dumbest rule in the world. I don't know why you can't, but you can't. So they wouldn't have let him stood at, stand out there and argue if he wasn't wondering. Well, then why was there a timeout called? A run scores, and it's now five to one. As this one is chopped to first, Napoli will grab it. He'll tag the bag, and that will end the inning. But a three-run inning for Kansas City. Royals have the five-one lead. down there as well but uh, this is the general area in between they actually have a medical table down there just in case just in behind the dugout area but you go up the steps and here you are into the Red Sox dugout not a bad sized dugout as dugouts go and not that far from the clubhouse nice stadium here at Kauffman Stadium and uh, much of the stuff uh, underneath has been renovated as it was a few years ago for the all-star game here so stuff is relatively new even though this ballpark is not Taking us where we can't otherwise go. That's right. Behind closed doors. In the air to shallow center field. And Dyson is there to make the catch on Christian Vasquez for the first out of the fifth inning. Let's take a look at tonight's list brought to you by Benjamin Moore. Best Red Sox second baseman. This tonight, Mike Andrews, Marty Barrett, Bobby Dort, Dustin Bedroya, Jerry Remy. We have a comment about tonight's list. Tweet us at hashtag Nesson List. Of course, tonight Mookie Betts making his major league debut at second base for the Red Sox as he stands in. 
Steve, did you play second base for the Red Sox at any point? I did indeed. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't have made the list. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he couldn't play second base. I didn't get a chance to play it very long. I loved playing second base. A lot of activity. Yeah, second. I mean, I, I grew up a center fielder. I, I, I felt like that was probably my best position. But second base, you're more involved. There's a little danger. You have conversations going on. You have cutoff responsibility. There's more happening. You know, the danger part. I mean, when you're turning a double play and your back is to the play almost every time. The ball's coming from shortstop. You know, the guy's coming in behind you. It's fun. That's with the dribbler down the first baseline. Guthrie's got to throw over his shoulder, and he does for the second out of the inning. Well, stay tuned tonight following WB Mason. Next shootings live for Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Send your questions to TC at hashtag Sox Final. Maybe yours will be answered on Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Yeah, you know, everyone thinks I talk too much anyway, but in center field, you didn't know who to talk to. Out there by yourself. I can't yeah. imagine you not talking. Picking to your nose. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> you talk to the fans. I, mean, I did. did you, you did. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I did. Who gave you the most grief? Everyone. Stadium-wise. I think the stadium was pretty yeah. brutal. <laughs> I learned things about my mother that I never knew. <laughs> stuff like that. You know. I mean, it was. <laughs> Well, towards left center, Alex Gordon makes his way in. And Jeremy Guthrie in a pretty good groove right now. He's retired eight in a row. Halfway through, 5-1 Kansas City. Joe Kelly, seven starts with the Red Sox, one and two with a 3.95 earned run average. Jason Vargas, 27 starts, 11 and eight with 3.25 ERA. Closer look brought to you by FW Web. For an even closer look, visit FWWeb.com. Well, we head to the bottom of the fifth inning back here in Kansas City. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. Stephen Wright comes in for the bottom of the fifth inning. Knuckleball are taken over for Ruby De La Rosa. His third appearance. Ray 1.00. 10 strikeouts to one walk. And opponents hitting at 200 against Wright. See how many innings he goes here for the Red Sox every leaf. We've seen him come on here and work multiple innings. In fact, through a season high five scoreless innings. 
On September the 7th against Toronto, giving up two hits and a walk. Six days ago, as Wright comes into the game here in the fifth with the Red Sox trailing five to one. Well, oh, you know, when you're a knuckleballer, that you can throw every day. It's not like your arm gets tired. It's the catcher that needs five days off in between your starts. Chopped up over the mound towards second. Bats to first base for the out. First time that he has been in on a play here. First assist for Mookie Betts at second base. One down. Now the Bruins begin their second season of Behind the B. Monday night at 8. Go inside player meetings after the team's disappointing second round playoff exit. Plus hometown visits are documented. Don't miss all that and more on the season premiere. Behind the B. Monday night at 8. 28 consecutive Royal batters since July 18th. Red Sox relievers getting it done. Stephen Wright's a guy that you're just so happy to get the opportunity. I talked to him for quite a bit, and he said, "You know, I was sailing along. I'm not one of those guys. I had good numbers everywhere I went, but I don't didn't throw hard, and I didn't have a swing and miss type of a pitch. You know, I got guys to ground out. I did what I was supposed to do as a pitcher, but I didn't throw. I think he was in the Cleveland organization. He said every guy in the pen threw a hundred." And here I am just kind of throwing, you know, low 90s. Said so it wasn't happening. When I finally broke out the knuckleball, they said, you know what? Start throwing that more often as your out pitch. And he said that happened in 2010. And then it did just evolved into him throwing exclusively knuckleballs now. One of the last remaining knuckleball guys out there. To left field, Cespedes is going back, and he'll reach back and make the catch. Two down in the inning as we send it down to Gary. Don, you were mentioning that five scoreless innings for Stephen Wright the last time he took the mound for the Red Sox. So this middle relief, probably more than just you know, kind of throwing away a couple of innings for Stephen Wright. John Farrell not ruling out the possibility that Wright works his way actually into the starting rotation, whether that be by the end of this year or to open up training camp to help himself get into that talk about being a starter with the knuckleball. So Stephen Wright pitching for more than just some disposable innings here. Stephen knows that he's in a difficult situation because he says basically I'm the long man here. And in order to be the long man it means that your starter has to have a bad start. He goes I don't want anyone to have a bad start but I would like to pitch. And is five and five this year with Pawtucket, a 3.41 earned run average. 15 starts for the Paw Sox as a starter this year. 240 opponent batting average in the International League. And the season on the DL had that sports hernia surgery. Saw my Cameron have a couple years ago. That was a pretty painful situation. Pitch in there for a strike, and it's three and one. Particulars for him, born in Torrance, California. Second round pick by the Indians. One's foul off to the left. Of course, Stevens heard all the jokes about the comedian, Stephen Wright, local New Englander who's pretty dry and funny. I'm not the same guy. Through the left side into left field, a base hit with two down. So Nori Aoki and his swing have a base hit here in the fifth inning. Second hit for Aoki. Don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live presented by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union tomorrow at 1.30. DC and Jim Rice will continue the top 30 Red Sox moments on Ness and Countdown with number 14. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Two down, Aoki at first base. Lorenzo Kane, the batter. Kane grounded back to the mound in the first inning, then doubled in the fourth inning. A fly ball to right, sending Nava back a step or two. And that'll wrap up the fifth inning. We played five tonight. It is five to one, Kansas City.
AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Nesson fan photo for a chance to be shown in our broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Tonight's fan photo is from Laura and Joe. We're at Coffin Stadium rooting the Red Sox on here last night. As leading it off here for the Red Sox is David Ortiz at the top half of the sixth inning. Maybe Laura and Joe made it home in time to see their picture in tonight's game. David sends it to center field. Out goes Gerard Dyson towards left center field. He'll make the catch on the dirt of the track for the first out of the sixth inning. Ortiz gives it a ride, but he's out number one. <laughs> Dyson had a long way to go on that one. He was playing Big Poppy to pull, of course. And that ball driven into the left center field gap. Ran it down. One down here in the sixth inning. It's now nine in a row, retired by Jeremy Guthrie. And it brings up Ioannis Cespedes. He's fly to right, fly to center. Pick up an RBI in the third inning on a sack fly. It is 95th RBI of the year. That grounder to third base, Mustakis. Another low throw, but it's dug out by Hosmer. Two down. Kind of short arm that one to first base, two away. He hasn't had his best defensive series, that's for sure. No. Players down there at third base, including one today. Back in the third inning, and a ground ball by Mookie Betts. Two down for Daniel Nava. Nava grounded out to first base in the first, fly out to center in the third, 0 for 2. Football season play the five hundred thousand dollar football challenge at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Each week the guest with the most picks wins five thousand dollars. One one pitch is up high, two and one. To the shortstop Escobar down to one knee. Throws out Nava and Guthrie. Who's in right along right now with a 5 1 lead?
maintenance player specializing in all of your cleaning and wellness needs. W.B. Mason also provides a full selection of 3M safety products that can't be struck out. Whatever, whenever, wherever. Who but W.B. Mason. Bottom of the sixth inning back in Kansas City. Royals on top five to one. Alex Gordon, Salvador Perez, and Eric Hosmer to bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Second inning of relief for Stephen Wright. Gordon flied out to left field in the first inning. Single to right in the fourth inning. Vasquez has gone to his bigger, almost like a first baseman's mitt, catcher's glove for the knuckleballer. The second base, Mookie Betts to his right, and a high, hard throw that Napoli goes up to get for the first out of the inning. Mookie settling back into second base. Mookie fighting to get over in front of that ball instead of backhanding it. Good range. This play takes a little bit to set up. So then when he realizes the runners down the line, he says, well, I better whip it over there pretty quick. One down here in the sixth inning, Salvador Perez, the batter. There's that glove. You see the fingers of it look a little bit more like a first baseman's glove than a catcher's mitt. Doug Marabelli for years catch uh, Tim Wakefield and seemed like he would kind of wait back on it, not really punch at it or try to reach out to grab the knuckleball. Hey, you almost you almost got to let it hit you. In the air down the left field line, Cespedes on the run and he pulls up as it lands foul. As we all know, a happy staff equals a productive staff. There's no better way to show your employees a good time than treating them to a night at Fenway Park. Go to redsox.com slash groups to book your company outing now. That's something I could embrace right there. Company outing out. Yeah. Keep everybody happy. In the air to right field. Nava coming in towards the line and he makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Two you know, down here in the sixth. It's funny you're talking about the glove that that Mirabelli used. And I'm not sure if Tim has his own and I know that Stephen Wright will call Tim Wakefield when he's not going good. Also, Charlie Huff is one of the guys that's out there really preaching the right and wrong ways to throw the knuckleball. But most knuckleball pitchers have their own glove. And I know that when Wright came in from the bullpen, he brought the glove in with him to give it to Vasquez. So the same glove that was used in the minor leagues for him is the one that he's got up here in the major leagues. Probably same glove that he travels for his catcher and what happens is there's not many of those gloves laying around So I'm sure whoever warms him up in the pen has to use that glove and then Wright has to bring it in with them when he gets into the game Knuckleball pitcher will travel glove <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if I want the catcher to be able to catch the ball <laughs> You don't get that stuff everywhere so. <laughs> no. One two is outside. Two and two. Osmer is fly to right, struck out swinging. All for two. Chop left side. Bogarts off balance throw is dug out by Napoli at first base. Good stretch. One two three sixth inning. Five one Kansas City.
for his life. The Royals had a great month of August, but September has seen a reversal of fortune so far for them. 19 and 10 in August, 6 and 5 in September so far. Average of 265 in August, only 222 in September. Runners in scoring position, certainly very good for them. Last month, big game tonight so far for Kansas City. They lead it 5 to 1 as we play into the top half of the seventh inning. Mike Napoli leading off an inning for the third time tonight. He is struck out, lined out to center. Two previous at bats. And the pitching line brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Jeremy Guthrie, six plus, giving up one run. It was unearned. Walked a batter, struck out a batter, and has retired the last 13 Red Sox in a row. Let's see if. Guthrie challenges Napoli here. He did. Just up in the zone high enough to get Napoli to swing right underneath it. Good placement for that pitch. A little bit low, and it is two and two. I believe Bradley Jr. and Middlebrooks scheduled to bat here in the top half of the seventh inning. Long Red Sox run coming back in the third. Sack fly for Jonas Cespedes. Swing a foul off of Salvador Perez. Knapp doesn't get cheated. It's kind of a spinner right there. You want to be a catcher? No, thank you. And that's the thing. The other thing, you know, kind of got him on the missed the pad, got him on the inside of that left shoulder. And Perez got to have four at bats today too. You were talking about how catchers develop a little bit later offensively. They have other things to worry about as far as the pitching staff is concerned and their other teammates and devising a game plan and worrying about calling pitches and then getting beat up back there. Oh, by the way, you're the next hitter. You just took a foul ball off your collarbone. Your fingers are always split up. Well, Napoli's certainly having appreciation for Salvador Perez after all the years that he caught. Yeah. I asked him beginning of the season if he misses it, and he answered very quickly, "Nope, <laughs> not a bit." Outside, full count. Now he was in a tandem there for a while with Jeff Mathis in L.A. under Mike Sosha. Yep. His career kind of blossomed once he got out from behind the plate. To third base, Mustakas. Oh. Nice play there in the half. Hop picks it and fires the first. Mustakas almost played himself into another error there. Watch him charge this ball, but he got caught in between. He wasn't sure whether or not he wanted to charge it or stay back on it. He decided to charge it, but he turned it into a do or die type play. You don't pick that. It's bouncing into left field. One down for Jackie Bradley Jr. One for two in the game tonight. It's another one of those plays that we talked about, like with Middlebrooks had. You got to make some kind of decision, like in what, less than a half a second? What? Charge, stay back, what? Wait, read the hop, do what? A lot of thinking going on in a short period of time. Made the right decision though, right? Being aggressive in that instance, coming on rather than backing up and having to play him. I think in that instance, yeah, coming in and, and getting that little short hop was the right play. He hesitated because he was thinking, can I go back on this and make it a big long hop? But I think he figured that hop would have eaten him up worse than the one he came in and caught. 
Center field and Gerard Dyson backpedaling. Puts it away for the second out of the seventh inning. Well, tune in tonight after our Red Sox coverage of Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Jamison and Dale Arnold will have former Patriot Jermaine Wiggins in studio with bold predictions for the Patriots Vikings game. And El Duncan's week two fantasy football tips and picks. See what know how can do. Two down here in the seventh inning. It's now 13 in a row retired by Guthrie. Bill Middlebrooks. Takes a running fastball for a strike over the inside corner. Will walked in the second inning, lined out to left in the fourth inning. Oh and two. Eight movement gets you every time, huh? A little bit high, one and two. Much better outing tonight for Guthrie than his last outing. Good bounce back outing for him. Roughed up by the Tigers in just two and two thirds innings, giving up eight runs. The difference in the two pitchers, both of these guys rely heavily on their changeup. Neither one of them have had a good one tonight. It didn't work out well for De La Rosa, and Guthrie has adjusted, gone to his other pitches, and has been successful anyway. Chop softly out towards Infante at second base, throws out Middlebrooks, and that'll end the top of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch, 5 1, Kansas City. Mason's wide selection of Green Mountain Coffee K Cup packs will keep you running and guarantees to satisfy any fan base. Order by 11:30 a.m. and get free same-day delivery. Who but W.B. Mason? We we're talking about uh, Stephen Wright bringing in his own glove for his catcher to use. He brought it in from the pen after that uh, outing out there in the bullpen to get ready. Now the glove that Christian Vasquez uses in the game. Stephen right out there for his third inning of relief. It's like catching a ball with a pancake. It's a big old floppy thing. I think it would be very hard to catch a ball with a pancake. 
It's very hard to <laughs> catch a knuckle ball. <laughs> There's Omar Infante. Mike Moustakis, Gerard Dyson, bottom third of the Royals order. I bet tomorrow morning up here in the spread, you won't have any trouble catching a pancake. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a pancake guy, believe what? it or not. You passed on I, something? I don't like pancakes. Wow. Yeah. Chocolate chip pancakes? No. no. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if it's the texture or what it is. Now, omelet is another thing altogether. I hear there may be an omelet station here. So that that is in my future. I don't like waffles either. Man, you're just no French toast. You're just down on the uh, yeah. the pastry type uh, breakfasts. Yeah. I don't like soggy bread. This is in the right <laughs> field for a base hit. Omar Infante has his second hit of the game. Well, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Men's Warehouse, proudly introducing Joseph Abood. DC and Jim Rice will have the latest on Major League Baseball playoff races. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. on Nessup. Do you like crepes? Nope. <sighs> just down on it all. I don't like quiche. What? Yeah. Uh, quiche is just an omelet thrown into a pie plant. You know, with a little crust. Come on. I don't like it. It's called a strike, although Vasquez couldn't catch it. You know, you're turning down a lot of stuff. I've seen you eat. I, I've never seen you push anything away. <laughs> I can't say no. Come on. Yeah. I have not seen it. Go to first and back is Infante. So we've been in Kansas City three days. How many how many days have you eaten ribs? The last two in a row. And, and what? The last Only two, in a row. two? Yes. The first day I did not have ribs. Dare I ask? Uh, I had chicken romillard or something like that. That's that's like they fooled you. It's what? quiche <laughs> with chicken. <laughs> and ahi tuna. Oh, healthy. Yeah. Yeah, nice. That's me. O2 pitch. Yeah, it's going to miss, and it is one and two. The rumor is that on both days you had ribs. You actually had a burger then for dinner on both days as well. Is that the rumor? Yeah, that's the rumor going around. <laughs> ribs, then a burger. I, I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> I don't recall. I do. I know that <laughs> I had lunch with you today and you were there for partially some of the dinner. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw what we had for dinner because you were kind of late in arriving. But. Uh, it is possible. From what I understand, it was a burger. Cheeseburger, even. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I indulged in the ribs with you earlier today. They yes. were great. Very, very good. Cannot come to uh, Kansas City and not get barbecue, right? I would argue the best barbecue anywhere is here in Kansas City. So would they. And I've tested it. They love it. I, I've been everywhere. One, two, pitch. Is fouled at the plate. Oh. Trying to keep that thing fair as Vasquez by slapping it back into fair ground. That's not going to work. Trying to figure out why that was a foul ball. It looked like Vasquez did try to keep it in front of home plate. Uh, I think because yeah. he was in foul ground, probably. That's a good call. <laughs> the what? I think because he was in foul ground. Yeah. <laughs> and slapping it back into fair ground. And <laughs> not <gonna work. laughs> Usually, if it's a foul ball, it stays that way. <laughs> Ball and two strikes to Mustakis. Infante at first base. Nobody out here in the seventh. Stephen Wright has a knuckleball that he throws a little bit harder when he looks for the strikeout. So he throws some of them up there about 64 miles an hour, and then when he's looking for one to really swing over the top of one, he'll throw it harder. He says his biggest problem, you know, knuckleball guys. Use their fingernails. They dig their fingernails into the ball. It's kind of a misnomer saying it's a knuckleball. It's really a kind of a fingertip ball. And he says, but over wear and tear from doing that, he, his fingers split open. They get like calluses and they split. He says that can give him some trouble. I asked him if he gets nervous and bites his nails like I do. He says, I do sometimes. But 
the first two, my index finger and my middle finger on my right hand are off limits. There will be no biting of so those fingers. All the rest. All the rest of them, <laughs> but not those. Hold over foul, still two and two. Crowd of the series so far tonight 26,627. 26,627 to see game three of this four game series. 2 2. Chopped right side. Napoli is going to go to second base for the first out of the inning. No chance to get it back to first as Wright headed over there to cover, but Mustakis will reach one down in the inning. It's a nice play by Knapp right there. He's got to go a long way to get the ball. He's always in excellent position for fielding, even when he's holding the guy on. And it's an awkward off balance type of a throw, but he makes it. You see the good jump comes in, cuts that off. Easy transfer to the throw and just made a tough play look pretty easy. Well, he has been banged up all season long. Fingers, legs, was sick, got the flu. The finger thing is the thing that amazes me, especially with as hard as he swings, it makes contact, the dislocated fingers that he's played with so long this year. And we all remember when that happened when he slid into, I think that was in Chicago, yeah. slid into second base. It was freezing that night. And he got up and his finger was pointing around a corner. It's not supposed to go that yeah, way. Yeah, it's not going. <laughs> That's still to be able to point like that. And it never got better. You know, all due respect, I mean, he wanted to play, and so he never really gave it a chance to get better. It's not going to get better, like you said, the, the way he swings the bat. Has to tape it up before every at bat. Rod Dyson here with the count of two and one. We'll take it outside. Action in the Red Sox pen. Matt Barnes is up in the pen for Boston. Stephen Wright in his third inning of relief right now for Boston. Mason fouls it straight back. Full count. For every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings or the Sox get a save, CBS Pharmacy will make a donation to Boston Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 donation once again this season. CBS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Boston trailing 5-1 to one here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Dyson strikes out. There's the first strikeout for Stephen Wright. And there are two outs here in the seventh inning. 72 miles an hour. The pitch before that, I believe, was actually a fastball. That one wasn't. See the movement there. Watch it up and then down. Wave making its way around here in Kansas City with two down in the seventh inning. You like the wave? I'm sort of eh, I'm in the <laughs> middle. Doesn't bother me. Been around long enough. Yes. You like the wave? I like watching it. Yeah. It's kind of a cool thing, especially from our vantage point. Very kind of cool. See it develop yeah. and then what happens. I'm too lazy to raise my hands up if I'm sitting in the stands and it comes by. I guess I don't know. Party pooper. Fouled off into the seats. Kind of petering out as it goes around the stadium. Yeah. yeah a couple times ago. A lot of event, I guess. A lot of people like me. They're, yeah. I'm not raising my hand. Yeah, that's it. I like the guys who have bad timing. They raise they raise up yay about two sections before it even gets to them. <laughs> I 
And just like that, it's over. Yeah. Up. Oh, no, no, no. It started up again. Right field. They're trying again. A two pitch to Escobar. On the ground, under the glove of right. Bogarts can't get it. It's in the center field. Moustakis will take second. On the single by Alcides Escobar, and Kansas City has two on with two outs. Well, don't miss WB Mason's extra innings live right after the game. The guys will break down Ruby De La Rosa's start and have John Farrell's post game comments. You can't go wrong when you buy right at WB Mason. We got a Aoki coming up here. There's two hits on the night tonight. Single to left, struck out, single to left again, driven in a run. One of the funkier guys you're ever going to see swing a bat. Makes it work for himself, though. Decided to make him the DH tonight instead of Billy Butler, and he's got two hits. Butler, who started last night as the DH, 0 for 4 in last night's game, and finds himself on the bench again tonight. Second time in the last three games. Butler's two for his last 29 to go along with Gordon Slump, although he had a base hit tonight. Now there's some people speculating that Butler hasn't been the same since Kevin Seitzer left this organization. He used to be the hitting instructor. Now in Toronto. Pickoff play at second, and he is safe. Stock is just getting back. Hogarth's cheating in. Everything was perfect there except right through a knuckleball to second base. <laughs> He's got to re grip it and he throws it a little bit high and he couldn't quite get it in there in time. They had him picked. Side one and two. Stock is at second. Escobar at first. Two down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Right trying to get through the seventh. Oki fouls it off, stays alive. Deck is Lorenzo Kane. Two and two. Get away, and the runners will move up. Their stock is to third, Escobar to second. Well, Vasquez has been handling that knuckleball pretty well. Let's see what this one does to him. Wow! Oh, jeez! You see that thing move as soon as he let it go. It took off. Watch how Vasquez tries to catch it. He's trying to backhand it after it's past him. <laughs> Feel bad for that. Swing and a miss. Sayoki strikes out. Right gets out of the jam. There's seven. It's five to one. Royals.
The Negro League Hall of Fame is right here in Kansas City. So who is your favorite Negro Leagues player? Satchel Paige with 57% of the vote. I think, uh, Don, you said, was it Buck O'Neill that Buck you liked? Buck O'Neill, yeah. Yeah, 10% of the vote right there. And then Cool Papa Bell, heck of a nickname, 25% of that vote. I think Satchel Paige, one of the reasons why he won is because he's the most recognizable name on that list as far as mainstream baseball. Major League Baseball, the old Negro Leagues that they had. Cool Papa Bell, Josh Gibson, Buck O'Neill. These guys really made a huge impact there. This one fouled off down the right field line out of play. And Guthrie has retired the last 14 Red Sox that he has faced in the game. And it's Christian Vasquez leading it off here in the eighth. Vasquez has fouled out to third and flied out to center. 0 for 2 in the game tonight. Bounce in. On the Evans talking to Stephen Wright. Looks like Barnes will be coming into this game next inning. Or the bottom of this inning. Satchel Page was 41 years old when he made his debut in the major leagues. Pitched, I believe, until he was 49. This is to left field. Alex Gordon going back. He'll have room, and he makes the catch for the first out of the eighth inning. All Town, New England's premier convenience retailer, is committed to supporting the communities they serve. For every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season, All Town will donate $500 to the Cystic Fibrosis Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Visit cfmsfund.org for more information. Earlier, we were talking about uh, Jose Altuve leads the league in stolen bases and also in batting average. And I was curious as to the last. Player to lead in both categories at the end of the year, winning the batting title and the most stolen bases. Answer turned out to be Ichiro back in 2001, won the rookie of the year and the MVP that year. It's in the air down the right field line. Lorenzo Kane over and under. And there are two down. 16 in a row now, retired by Guthrie. Ichiro came into the league like a house of fire, didn't he? Tremendous. They had a feeling he had more power than he was willing to show you there in the beginning as well. I mean, he was became kind of a singles hitter over the years, but he had power. He was like Wade Boggs. He has tremendous power. You what you watched him take batting yeah. practice, right? Like he just launches balls yeah. into the right field seats. Last base runner for the Red Sox was back in the third inning, single by David Ortiz to right field. Xander Bogarts one for three in the game. I think Wade Boggs is one of those guys. If you put him in any home run hitting contest, he'd have a great chance of winning it. Great bat hand eye coordination. We all know that, but he just he had massive power when he wanted to use it. Third and three tonight. 102 his average. Very good in the game tonight. Really is stymied the Red Sox. Just the one run and it's unearned. And low stress innings for Guthrie. Just three hits on the evening for the Red Sox. And as I said, really hasn't had good command of that changeup either. So he's he's adjusted and has done a nice job. Coming through big for a Kansas City team who desperately needs a win. Strikes out Bogarts and ends the top of the eighth inning. It's five to one, Kansas City.
Baseball in Nesson is brought to you by the new Scion TC, Southwest Airlines, the New England Ford dealers, and by Nissan, innovation that excites. Five to one, Kansas City on top of Boston. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Kansas City out hitting the Red Sox nine to three. Third arm used tonight by John Farrell. Matt Barnes in his second major league appearance. Three innings in his first appearance, giving up three hits. Walks, two strikeouts, not allow a run, and well, it's hitting at 250 against Barnes. Through three scoreless innings. His major league debut on the ninth against Baltimore. He looked good in that one. I remember a lot of the questions after that game. Hey, did he pitch well enough to earn a start? I think John Farrell was like, ho, 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 hang on now. Take it easy. <laughs> we'll get him in there. He did look good. I think he was just the fourth of this month. He was throwing a game in the semifinals of the Governor's Cup down there for Pawtucket. First round draft choice by the Red Sox 2011, 19th overall. Number nine prospect in the organization, according to Baseball America, entering the year. Red Sox seem to choose 19th in the draft a lot. You know, I was the 19th pick. Ellsbury was 19th. Matt Barnes, 19th. Usually, if you have good years, you drop in the draft. You know, this year, they're going to get a higher round draft. There's some Sox culture for Matt Barnes. They have music house and country. They have a movie Fast and Furious. Mila Kunis. Yeah. Down to first base where the walk goes Kane to begin the inning. Enters mom and dad. Or more Las Vegas. Atlantis of the Bahamas. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard any country house music? No. Neither. That would be an odd combo, huh? But he likes house music and. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Yeah. I think you don't combine those. There's just not. Not sure. I'm, I'm a fan of either. <laughs> Lead off walk for Kane. He takes off on the first pitch and the throw is not going to be in time. Gets away. Backed up by Mookie Betts. The Royals keeping the pressure on. Kane walks and then steals second base. 25 on the year for Kane now. Good jump. Kind of an awkward way of trying to tag the runner down there by Bogarts. He's stationed himself behind the base and kind of tried to short hop it. <laughs> Second, nobody out. Alex Gordon taking a strike. He is down 0 and 1. Going to take strike two. Gordon fly to left in the first inning, single to right in the fourth, and scored. Grounded out to second base in the sixth inning. Salvador Perez on deck for Kansas City. Just away. Sox this year was eight and nine with a 3.95 earned run average. A total of 22 starts on the year. Popped up, foul ground. Middlebrooks will go as far as he can, but it's well back into the seats.
Line down the right field line, a fair ball. Kane from second base to come around and score. Into second with an RBI double goes Alex Gordon. And it's now 6-1 to one, Kansas City. Well, that's a huge relief, not only for Alex Gordon, but also these Royals fans trying to fight and claw their way into the playoffs here. And Alex Gordon, along with Billy Butler, two guys really struggling here in this offense. He's got a couple hits on the night, maybe. He starts to play a little bit like the number one guy that he is in this organization. Gordon at second base, a run in, still nobody out. And Salvador Perez, the batter. He'll take strike one. Perez grounded out to shortstop in the first. He doubled, driving a run in the fourth inning, and fly to right in the sixth. Elvin Herrera, Brandon Finnegan up for Kansas City. Popped up foul, back and out of play. Bob's Discount Furniture is going to bat for the Jimmy Fund once again. Bob will donate $1,000 to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. Bob's Discount Furniture, quality, choice, and value. Learn more at mybobs.com. Nobody out to run in. Gordon at second base. Salvador Perez down 0-2. Perez now, Hosmer next. It's Kansas City bats here in the bottom of the eighth. Adding on to their lead and out hitting the Red Sox 10 to 3 in the game. On top 6 to 1. Good pitch by Barnes right there to get in in the kitchen of Perez. Now he's got to put him away. I think for a pitcher coming to the big leagues from the minor leagues, the biggest. Two situations that they learn at the major league level is that you can't get away with just throwing high fastballs and having guys swing through them for your strikeouts. Guys at the major league level won't swing at it that often. And then you've got to be a little closer to the plate to entice guys to swing at bad pitches. Can't get ahead in the count, and just throw some slop up there in the dirt and expect that all these guys are going to swing at it. Good pitch, not called a strike. And it's two and two. That should have been a put away pitch right there. That's been a strike all night, hasn't it? Yeah, right at the knees. Swing at a foul tip. And he's out. Strike three. Held on to by Vasquez. First out of the eighth inning. For a strikeout for Matt Barnes. Once again, down the zone. Nice job of pitching here by Barnes. Fifth strikeout tonight for Red Sox pitching. And here's Eric Hosmer, 0 for 2, 0 for 3 now in the game. He's fly to right, struck out, and grounded out to shortstop. Swing and a miss. High fastball from Barnes. Well, Stephen Wright was in there, did a pretty good job. Three innings, three hits, no runs. Didn't walk anybody, and struck out two. Logging some innings tonight for Boston after their starter and pitcher of record right now, Ruby De La Rosa, lasted just four innings. Osmer down 0 and 2. Two pretty big cuts there, both fastballs. By him at 94. Similar to the pitch that he hit out of the ballpark in last night's ball game. He kind of went out and hooked it. Couldn't get that one.
Hey, Red Sox Nation, get a free medium beverage when you enroll in the Dunkin' Donuts Rewards Program. DD Perch, then just pay with your registered DD card or the DD mobile app to earn points towards more free beverages. It's Dunkin's way of rewarding their loyal fans. Roll today at ddperch.com. Red Sox run on Dunkin'. Gordon at second, one down, a run in. Barnes with an 0-2 pitch to Hosmer. It's high for ball one. Generally in this situation, you see what kind of off speed or change up that Barnes will have. Stays with the fastball up and away, and he strikes out Hosmer. Back to back case for Barnes, two down in the inning. Climb the ladder on Hosmer. He got him to swing through it once. Figure, why don't we try it again? Two down, Gordon at second base, and it brings up Omar Infante. Singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth, singled in the seventh. Picked up an RBI, 61st of the year for the Royals' second baseman. And he'll take strike one. More fastballs from Matt Barnes. There's a curveball for you, and it's in there for a strike, 0 and 2. Finally, something off speed. Just letting him know he's got it. On the ground, up the middle, into center field, a base hit. From second comes Alex Gordon. Here's the throw from Bradley Jr. It is cut off. And in is Gordon, and the Royals add their lead seven to one. Well, Bradley Jr. might have a chance. Uh, that's a mistake right there. You see that pitch just catches too much of the plate on an 0 2. Up the middle, you see it's just dribbling up the middle, and that's why JBJ can't throw the guy out at home. Comes up firing, but you know, he does everything right out there. He charges the ball hard, but you can see how this ball is just not getting out there to him in time. Omar Infante with the base hit and his second RBI of the game, a three hit night for Kansas City's second baseman. Here's Mike Moustakis. A swing and a miss for strike one. He has fly to center, grounded out to first, and reached on a fielder's choice. Shoots it down the left field line foul. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox, now offers walk in urgent care in Chestnut Hill. It's open 10 hours a day for minor emergencies. For more information, go to bidmc.org slash Chestnut Hill. Two down here in the eighth inning. Two runs in for Kansas City. And a pitch high now at 93 miles an hour. So Barnes in his first outing, three shutout innings, but to here in two thirds of an inning so far, giving up two runs. Brandon Finnegan is up alone now for Kansas City. Out of the reach of Bogarts and into center field, a base hit from Mustakis, and Fontail takes second. 
three hits in the inning for Kansas City. First hit of the night from Stockis. Yeah, they're probably going to come and get him now and at least have a conversation. That's not too bad a pitch right there. It had some good movement on it. It was a breaking ball. Tried to go back door with it. Stockus did a pretty good job of staying on that ball and driving it up the middle. It's just a kind of a pep top from John Farrell. Or Nieves, I'm sorry. Wednesday on Bruins Summer Faceoff Live, Billy Jaffe and Andy Brickley break down the Montreal Canadiens. Hear from current players and alumni of the Bruins annual golf tournament, plus a full preview of training camp. Catch all that and more on Bruins Faceoff Live Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Gerard Dyson coming up here, 0 for 3 in the game. He has grounded out twice and struck out. Let's take a pitch high for ball one. I think Nevis goes out there and says, Look, there's nobody in the pen. You're finishing this thing off. Just keep going right at guys. 30th pitch of the inning coming up here for Barnes. And that's a high strike call. There for strike two. Dyson, the seventh member of the Royals to bat here in the eighth. Yeah, but Fonte at second base, Moustakis at first, two down. Back to the screen, still two and two. Barnes really hasn't had trouble getting ahead of hitters. He's had a little bit of difficulty putting them away. Swing and a miss. He puts away Dyson and ends the eighth inning. Kansas City adds two more. They take a 7 1 lead.
Sosa chased from the game after four innings. He is charged with five runs. David Ortiz two for three tonight. Uh, that showed the Red Sox offense for the most part as Guthrie. He goes eight innings and finishes up strong, retiring the last 17 batters that he faced in the ball game. And right now, pitcher of record as he came into the game at 10 and 11. And Fonte three for four with three singles and a couple of RBIs tonight for Kansas City. So it's on to the ninth inning and a new pitcher now for Kansas City, Brandon Finnegan, into his third game has not given up a run in two and two thirds innings, three strikeouts, no walks. He takes over for Guthrie, who's very good tonight, Steve. He ends up retiring the last 17 batters he faced in the game. Yeah, he did. I, I think he, it was a little bit of a, like we said, he didn't have many high stress innings, but I think it was a stressful start for him knowing that he couldn't really use all his weapons and he still got it done. David Ortiz takes strike one. David is the last batter to reach for the Red Sox. That was back in the third inning. Leads it off here in the ninth. Veteran Scott Downs up in the pen, another left hander. Ortiz takes the strike. Ball and two strikes. Single to left in the first, single to right in the third, and then flight out to the warning track in center in the sixth inning. In the shift here on the right side on David. It'll bounce in. Downs had been warming. He's not warming anymore. So do you think he's warm? No, I think he was just getting some work. Because oh. we haven't seen him in the three days that uh, the series has gone on. Ortiz strikes out. First strikeout for Finnegan, the first out of the ninth. Finnegan climbing the ladder here, just blowing away. Big poppy upstairs. One down for Yuana Cespedes. He's provided the lone Red Sox run tonight. His sacrifice fly back in the third inning brought in Mookie Betts. At the time it was a one run game. Royals had a 2 1 lead over the Red Sox. That was the top of the third inning. Congratulations to the Pawtucket Red Sox winning the Governor's Cup tonight. Good for them. It's outstanding. Came in as the wild card team. And a 4 1 win to wrap it up. Fortunately, they did not get to wrap it up at home. But that doesn't matter. Such a great organization down there, man, I'll tell you. Had a lot of fun. Swing and a foul tip. John Farrell saying before the game that uh, there could be as many as five of those Pawtucket Red Sox coming up here for the series in Pittsburgh. And you have to believe that Rusne Castillo will be one of those five coming here. Indeed, he will be. I think the Pittsburgh Pirates series interesting. One two pitch to Cespedes. And he'll follow it back to the screen. Still one and two. All Town, New England's premier convenience retailer, is committed to supporting the communities they serve. For every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season, All Town will donate $500 to the Cystic Fibrosis Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. Visit cfmsfund.org for more information. Alan Craig has come out on deck to bat for Nava. There's a 1 2 to Cespedes. 
And a swing and a miss. Finnegan strikes out the first two batters he faces in the ninth. Two down. Well, you know why they like this kid. Can rush it up there pretty good. A little deception kind of hides the ball behind him. Well, Royals pitching retiring the last 19 Red Sox in a row. And here is Alan Craig to pinch hit for Daniel Nava. Two hits in the first inning, one hit in the third, and that's it. In there for strike one to Craig. 93 the average for Craig. Strike two. Not a real fun assignment when you're sitting on the bench all night long, kind of cold, and you've been struggling at the plate anyway. Coming and face this guy is just blowing people away. The 0 2 pitch in the dirt, and it's a ball and two strikes. Eight innings tonight for Jeremy Guthrie. Gave up one run, it was unearned. Brandon Finnegan trying to finish off the Red Sox here in the ninth inning. Greg hits a fly ball down the right field line. Lorenzo Kane will go as far as he can, and Kane can't catch it. Up off the glove and off the tarp and <laughs> behind the tarp. He had to try to jump back towards first base almost. After he got down in the corner behind the tarp, now he's got to try to jump up and over the tarp and in. And hit him right in the glove, but he couldn't hang on to it. Right off the outside of his fingers. He's taking the blame. Well, there wasn't anyone else over there. Well, the tarp. <laughs> the one two pitch. Right, fouls it back to the screen. 94 on the fastball that time. Napoli waiting on deck. What makes it tough is that Craig has sat there and watched the two guys go before him strike out on fastballs. Finnegan has a good one, but he's also got a nasty slider that he can use in this situation, and he doesn't have to throw it for a strike. To right field and in for a base hit for Craig. A two out base hit. It breaks up a string of 19 in a row retired by Royals pitching. Craig did his homework. He saw that he continued to throw that fastball. He got another one and goes the other way. That's kind of Alan Craig's game right there. Hard hit balls the other way. Red Sox fans haven't seen much of that since he's been in this uniform. But this is a guy that has a history of being able to hit when he's healthy. Now Mike Napoli. He'll take strike one. Just missing one and one. Ball on a strike here to Napoli. Fouls it off to the right, and again the Red Sox down to their last strike. Jackie Bradley Jr. on deck with two down here in the ninth. The one two pitch. Napoli fouls it off again.
First hit allowed by Finnegan in his major league career. Base hit to right, pinch hit for Alan Craig. The two outs here in the ninth inning. He's now jumped ahead of Napoli, one and two. Two and two. A two two pitch. Napoli hits it on the ground towards third base. Mustakas looked at second and it goes to first for the out that ends the ball game. Well, after the Red Sox took the first two games of the series, it's the Kansas City Royals who come back and down the Red Sox seven to one. We'll step aside and come back with more from Kansas City right after this.